room full of bad One big room full of bad One big room full of bad One big room full of bad so we're in the lift at our first hotel stay with No, are we there? Yes. yes. First we're at the Palio House. We're at the Palio House Hollywood. It's a little boutique hotel. It's really cute. It's very adorable. They have so. real keys. The whole world. Balloon. <laughs> you halloo. You balloon. <laughs> fucking, fucking bad as hats so it's real. Oh. We're, they put us all the way down at the end of the hallway because they know we're trouble. Oh my. This is fucking rad. This is so rad. This is baller status right here. No, we're there yet. Baller style. Olive just messed up our beds. Olive likes LA, I guess. <laughs> Wow, you're blurry. <laughs> We're here at the Hyena Gallery, and Olive's just got a token, so we're gonna do the vending, the art vending machine. It's gonna be fun. <laughs> Woo! You just collected just like a packet of crisps. Wait, show us what you got. It's like Christmas. It's Christmas. It's like Christmas. You know, when, when I was first opening the store, I was trying to figure out a name. And I, I, in, in my personal life, I was collecting these woodcut prints from the 1800s and 1700s from like encyclopedias and stuff. And I realized I had a lot of hyenas. And the way it was spelled is the archaic spelling, the Latin. And I, I started really delving into the whole hyena mythos. And they were like the origins of the werewolf. They, they're these really skilled, skilled hunters. And people think they're scavengers, and it's a real misconception, because mostly they're like some of the most intelligent pack animals. And I love the concept of a pack. Like, like just alone, I can't do anything, you know, but with, with like all of us together, we can really make an impact. And that was the concept of the store, to make an impact on the art world. And because no one was showing this stuff when I moved out here. The gallery is really just everything I love. You'll see pinup art, you'll see serial killer art, you'll see, you know, just some of the most talented cats around. It's about 95% local here, but there's a submission process. People send in their, their catalog of work and we review it. But then there's some artists I, I'm such a big fan of, I go and seek out and try to bring them into the gallery. So a little bit of everything. Sometimes someone just wanders in here and blows my mind with stuff. This is our art vending machine. And the concept was making art affordable for anyone. So you buy a token for five bucks, you put it in there and um, out pops uh, an original piece of art in a can. You know, it, it's the easiest way to start a collection, in my opinion. And plus, you know, you find your favorite artist in here, chances are we'll have them in the machine at some time, so you can get a really affordable piece from your favorite artist, too, which is kind of a rare treat. <laughs> so, Olive and I have some time before our next filming, so we decided there's this thing called the Angel's Flight, which brings us up a... Uh, a hill somewhere in LA. <laughs> and it's only 50 cents and it looks like fun. Are we moving? We have a dollar, so we're going. Yeah, we have a dollar, so we're gonna ride it up and down. And I'm gonna. Wait, isn't it 50 cents one way? Yeah. Oh, wait, we're just gonna ride it up. <laughs> oh my god, I feel like we're going to die now. I feel like this is no longer a good idea. Ah! On top of the world! No, not really. On top of. Nothing, but you can see. <laughs> ah, we're here. We, yeah. <laughs> the whole concept was let's just get back to trying the spirit the way it's supposed to be consumed, which is neat. And what we do to, you know, kind of help people along in their neat experience, because a lot of people are used to having great cocktails and things that taste, you know, not as alcohol forward as straight booze. So what we do is accompany it with a sidecar pretty much so we have fresh squeezed juices and fresh produce and we just ask them what they're in the mood for so you want something spicy or sour or sweet or savory and we build a, a drink that complements the spirit that you're drinking not something that chase the the taste away but something that kind of enhance it a little bit more so that's the whole deal behind it 
a lot of people come in and go, oh, this is a whiskey bar, um, which isn't, I mean, yes, it is in that we have Irish whiskey and Scotch whiskey and bourbon whiskey and rye whiskey, um, but we also have Pisco and tequila and mezcal and gin and a lot of other things. It's just when everyone sees a lot of brown spirits, they you know, go, oh, it's a whiskey bar. But it's not really, it's, it's a bar that, like I said, where we try and showcase spirits that have something to offer on their own that don't need to be mixed with anything else. So uh, yeah, if there's a really great vodka, then sure, I'm gonna get a vodka in. But ideally vodka doesn't really, or shouldn't really taste like anything. So for something that I wanna serve neat, there isn't a lot of flavor behind it. So it just takes on whatever flavor I decide, or we decide to, to build alongside of it. But um, we don't really, yeah, we just focus on great spirits. I want a cool mixology. Like, I want yeah. a cool mixed down. I'm really, I'm really, I'm really we're having like. Do our own I'm oh my god, yeah, we're gonna do our own mixed yeah. It's like <laughs> I'm, having, I'm having like serious mixed down. It's like envy over here. Because I'm sitting over here like watching Hector make our drinks, and I'm just like, okay. It's like, it's like maracas or something. Like Castanet, but Castanets you go like this. Still. You know what we're saying. I'm still really jealous. <laughs> um, these drinks look super good. They're both green. Favorite Chinese takeaway. Uh, uh, oh, oh, so excited! Oh, oh my god, those hats! Those hats are amazing! I should have gotten a hat here instead of Target, which is where I got my hat. <laughs> we've, all, we've lost all of to the men's jackets. I know you do. Yeah, you totally should have gotten one of those hats. I could just like. I, I, like if I had, oh my god, I would be the happiest guy in the world if I had all this. These right. all belong to me. <gasps> Look at those hats. Those are like emeralds. Uh -huh. The bowling pin pin! Oh, is, that a, oh, is that a bowling pin ring? No, uh, it's a bowling pin... <laughs> bowling pin money clip. Well, that's pretty cool too. Yeah. It's fancy. Flea is a flea market in a store. That's how I came up with the concept, because I have everything, anything and everything that you might find at a flea market but inside a store. I go to estate sales, um, I have people who bring, I have a couple clients who bring in quantities of merchandise and we do consignment. Um, just anywhere, people come, I have a couple, couple regular people that come around selling me things. A lot of people come in for hats, uh, a lot of people here I carry hats. So I usually have a good assortment, good selection. They're almost all vintage. And, uh, you know, especially the men are wearing a lot of hats nowadays. So I have a whole wall full, uh, just all different styles. Same thing for, for women. Half this, everything is half for women, half for men in the whole store. These are some of my favorite things. I keep the really beautiful beaded bags, dressy purses. <laughs> I love these. So, you know, I don't keep these on the floor. Someone has to ask if they're looking for a special special evening bag. So, these are all really beautiful. They used to make really pretty things. 
Uh, Masita has actually been here, Masita has been here forever. Uh, Masita has been here, I think, since at least the 50s, and it was originally called the Brass Rail Bar. And then sometime in the 1960s, they changed it to Masita, and then the current owner has been here almost six years. Before, it was just a daytime bar, uh, and it had a very older crowd. And then about six years ago, when the new owners took over and they started bringing DJs, they built this bar out here. This was never here before. And uh, started having the fun time, late night dance, until you drop action. There's gay night, there's punk rock night, there's pop and rock and espanol night, there's dance music night, there's punk and reggae night, there's top 40 night, there's Mexican big cowboy hat band guy night. You, you pick it, we got it. We actually, a couple years ago, we had Jane's Addiction's first show with the original lineup in 17 years, and that was here. And then we've had Mariachi El Bronx. Um, Ruby Stewart's band keeps playing here. They are called Revolt Air, and Rod Stewart was here the other night watching. We have all sorts of weird people coming through here. Yeah. And then what's, what's, what's with the Hydra, or what's, what's that all about? That's, uh, it's punk rock and cheap booze and lots of yelling, and if you stick around for two hours or so, then you'll find out. We do this thing called the, uh, called the Bandera, which is actually three shots. It's a shot of tequila, a shot of lime juice, fresh squeezed always, and then uh, a shot of Clamato, and you take a one, two, three. And if you like in a minute, we can get a shot of you taking that shot. See how you, see how you deal with it. We're, we're also famous for our Micheladas, famous for our Bloody Marys, and famous for our Happy Hour Destroyer Margaritas. That's 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 a pint of margarita that tastes like nothing. <laughs> it sounds awesome. The most interesting thing about this place is really the crowd. I mean, you'll come in through the front door at five o'clock in the afternoon and you see all the old people that have been hanging out here for a million years, and you know they come from all over Latin America, and then you come out here and it's a younger, more American crowd. Uh, people just knocking back beers and having a great time, and then at night when the DJs come in, you never know who's going to show up. I mean, any, any different kind of person that you would ever want to meet is here at Lasita every day. We were just at the bar and we drank and drank as usual. As usual. And look, look, there's disco balls on the wall. Look, we can see ourselves in the disco ball. There's an olive. There she is. Ah. Here. <laughs> this disc, it's very sparkly in here, it's very fun. Totes sparkles. Yeah. Lots of it. Lots of it. I would love to see him in a name of Punk Man playing that. Oh when there's loads of no sparkles time. and punk bands, but we have no time! Have the theme of not we there yet is we have no time! We have places to But you guys have time, and that's why we're doing this. We're doing this for you, so that you guys have time to have Some fun in these places that we can't have fun in. So, yeah. So, yeah. We're, yeah, that's, that's so, all yeah, that's, that's my good <laughs> I opened up specializing in jewelry and beading workshops because I'm a jewelry designer. Um, this is my collection here. Um, but because I always loved art and also was a designer before that I feature artists. So anything in here is artist based. Even like the jewelry, some of the artists make their jewelry collections from their original art or even the vintage things. To me it's art. It's, you know, it's something from the past, so, so an art and jewelry shop. <laughs> when I first opened, I had met a lot of talented artists from different shows that I showed my jewelry collection at, like Bizarre Bizarre um, or Unique LA, and what I did was I contacted those people, the cards that I had kept or people I had talked to because I admired their work. And then from there on, it just expanded. They told me, oh, I have a great artist or I have a designer you should meet. And then there's people who email me also. So I've gotten a lot of different designers from and artists from both aspects. It's an open studio workshop and it's for kids and adults. And basically you can um, just pick out fun beads, lay them on a tray and design your own things. Like we have samples over there and we also do private parties. Um, and it's, I want to say it's, it's just like a color me mind, like a fun way to just make jewelry but not, and not be a serious class. This is like my jewelry collection and um, I use mostly vintage beads and I kind of mix it up with some new glass beads. Um, and then we have a lot of little like 
really cute little gifty things. Then we have our main gallery wall, which is held for mainly group shows. And uh, right now we're doing a show called The Wonder Pup Show, which is an art benefit for animal disease research for the ACVIM Foundation. So we're raising money for that. Oh, uh, what were you, what are you like? Look at what you did. I hope you're satisfied with yourself. <laughs> oh my god. There's too many margaritas. Make your towel on the walls while I show you. <laughs> oh, show us. Okay, so I want you. So you take an ordinary. What is this? This isn't a bath it's towel. Poop. Bath towel? What is this? Like a hand towel? That would be a face. No, not a face towel. Hand towel? I think it's a hand towel. That's quite. That's a quite big hand towel. I don't know. Well, whatever. You take this size. You take this size towel, and you just like, you just put it in your teeth like this, and then you just, you just, you just roll it. You just go. You just turn. You just go like this. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> Fuck <laughs> off. And you do that until your... you break your teeth. Uh huh. Like... You don't have to pull really hard. You just roll it. And then you just go like this. <laughs> and. Oh, yeah. It's like a swan snake goose thing. Oh. No. Can I be this shit? Can I be this shit? Can I be this shit? Now you got loose powers. Can I be this shit? 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 So, after you've been up for a long night drinking. Very long night. Very long night. We don't even know what time we went to bed. She passed out in a planking <laughs> position, like just like oh, you know, right on the bed. I don't remember what time. I broke a cigarette in half, but I cut it like seriously, like cut she it in broke half, like all of her nails. nails. Broke I all, all of her all, nails. Of, all of my nails, like they were all just like ten a pile on the floor. I was like, what gone. the hell happened? <laughs> <laughs> what, ah! is our, what is our lives, man? Sandwiches. <laughs> Sandwiches. I already don't know how I feel about. <laughs> Yeah, I know. Now that I'm looking at it, I'm like, Bleh. oh well. Let's see what happens. Curious. Curious. Oh, I just blew a snot bubble out of my nose. God, we're so attractive. That's why we're single. <laughs> yeah, right. Squirrel. No! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> this one right here. Fuck. I think I scared it. Oh my god, it's staring at me. I'm gonna come back and shit on your face. Hey, squirrel. It looks like taco. Oh, we're blurry and it's sunny and I don't have my socks. We're sunnies. about to climb but shit with climb all shit. this stuff. <laughs> with, all this, with all this stuff. Yeah, we're about to go into the old zoo. Zoo! <laughs> woo! Zoo, woo! <laughs> And we're here with our new friends as well. Oh. <laughs> we have been. Oh, wait, is it this one or the other one? Oh, it's the other one. Oh. We're about to do some breaking and entering of a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. You guys coming? Hello. Hi, we're here. <laughs> we're in the graffiti field. Monkey cage. Ah! <laughs> Let's slip through the fence. What are you doing? How did you get up there? She's like terrified. Look at her face. It's pure terror. Don't hide your face. 
I think they just like climbed up. I'm gonna do it. And again. Oh, hi. Oh, hi. We're sitting on bars. Who's <laughs> gonna <laughs> 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 Wow, there's children screaming. Ah! That's what's terrifying. <laughs> the, most, the most terrifying about this is the squirrels. And squirrels are not terrifying. You like the coyotes, but you don't like squirrels. I don't know why squirrels just. I don't. I think it's because they're always like really squirrely. You know, they're always like they're they're tweaking just out, so and then they're, they're just so sketch. sketch. So I was like, <laughs> super sketch. No, now we're sitting on Rhode Island bars. That's not the scary part. The children and the squirrels. I'm really the scary part. Yeah. I can see you making faces at me behind me, Olive. <laughs> I'm not doing anything. Look, it's like I'm creeping yeah. on you. <laughs> we, have, we have music for your epic fight. I got money. You got money? No, it's me. <laughs> Look, I got money. That, that should be for the victor. <laughs> I want a good, clean fight. Can we poke each other? Sure. <laughs> Poking Z. Poking. As long as it's not in the eye or bum hole, okay? <laughs> Yeah, none of that. <laughs> All right. That's not fair. <laughs> God, I was going to take off her head. You guys are not very exciting. What was that? <laughs> I heard that. Yeah, what was that? It was a growling noise. The ghost yes. of a tiger. Right? Lost to a sore place. Lost. Okay, no, no. Hey. I got another chance of finding a stick. Okay, it's not fair. Oh my god! Ah! <laughs> <laughs> Like won't give up. She's like, I won't, I won't give up until you have nothing left. Oh yeah. Wait, it's a race. First one into the top, and then you have to slide back down. Wait, give me. I'm just pulling my weight. The pole. There's a pole in the wind. He's like a fucking monkey, man. Both of them. My toe. You have to slide down. I jammed my toe on the way up and on the way down. Oh my god, what are you doing? Ew. Don't touch that, that's disgusting. Yeah. Come over here. What are you doing? Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> I just see like feet just like disappear. Lies up. <laughs> Um, scared. <laughs> You're fucking retarded. Okay. I don't know her. We're, We're out. We're in a monkey cage. <clears throat> We're in a monkey cage. Uh, the Griffith Park Old and Zoo. And that's all. And that's all. <laughs> Wait, what? The Griffith Park Old Zoo. And that's all. This is what happens to Olive when she drinks too much. We have to put her in a cage because she's a danger to herself and the rest of society. <laughs> And here's the observatory. It's ISO. A. Z. They think I'm weird cause I'm hurt rapping. I'm the nigga that think a little different I can tell ya how I see it and how I see it is my perspective I keep it so 100 so there's never rumors playing And if they are I find the square like my problems is algebraic I solve them all first they continue my shitty day and That's why my niggas looking Hello, we're having a color party with the puppies all in bed yes, And yes. our jam jams They look they like poop Yeah, it's <laughs> practically we both, we both were like looking at ourselves and we're like, wait, before we do this, we should we put on hats. hats. Hey. <laughs> because we're both in our gym gyms and look like a bag of smashed assholes. It's lagging so badly. <sighs> My computer is dying. Yeah, well, anyway. Yeah! So, so once again, we're the ladies of NAR. That was our episode. Bozo LA. Hope you liked it. Yeah.
And next week, or well, maybe well, not next. Let week. me know next week. <laughs> next one is the next San one is going to be San Francisco. Woo! San Francisco. Oh man, you have butt breath, dude. Oh, they both do. Mm. But okay. yeah. yeah. So well, we'll see you guys next time, and remember to subscribe, subscribe to our channel, like our videos. Um, we try really hard to post new videos. <laughs> Every Friday, we try. But We're getting better at it. We missed last week, so don't go looking for last week. Because <laughs> um, it's not going to be there. But um, <laughs> we're going to try and post something for you guys next week. And in San Francisco, so watch out or Taco will get you if you don't subscribe. And Casey will do this and Casey stupid will get face. Yeah. <laughs> so, bye. Oh. Oh, Have a good weekend. Oh, they're going to start making no, out. No, they're going to play. Oh. Okay, goodbye. Bye.